Welcome to the live. This here, let me just move him up a little bit. This is Bean. This is my own dog. He is what I assume is a Cairn Cross. Uh, we got him second hand, so I'm not quite sure what he is. Uh, the people we got him from said that he's a Westy Cross Jack Russell, but um, I'm not convinced. But anyway, um, he's due his groom today, so I'm going to, you know, take you with me. Um, it's a nice chill groom today. He's my last dog of the day. Nice, easy finish on a Saturday. So I've got a bit more time to just sort of chat and just answer any questions, anything like that. So if you want to know anything, just do give me a shout as I groom. Right, let me just, I'm going to move you a little bit closer. So you'll see Bean a bit more than you see me. Uh, which I'm sure you're not going to be upset about. No one is to see me. <laughs> so there we go. Hi, honey. He's handsome, isn't he? There we go. Okay, so I do like a weird, like a mixed groom with him. He kind of has like a westy head, schnauzer legs, no skirt or tuck or anything like that. And then I carrot his tail as well. He doesn't like to be groomed, as you can see. He'd rather just snuggle me, wouldn't you? Okay. Anyway, right, so on his body, I use a 7. I love my wide blades. These just speed up the process so much. And he is a very beautiful brindle. You can't really see it at the moment, but as soon as I start clipping him, you'll be able to see how beautiful he is underneath all of this hair. My other half calls him a tiger. I, I always call it, you know, like a turtle, tortoise shell, something like that. Whatever kind of pops into my head, but I'm just going to get started with him. So what you want to do when you're clipping, if you're not, you know, new, very experienced with grooming or anything, um, if you're doing the, the dog's body and the head different, you want to find the base of the skull, just there. So like a little, like a bubble there, it's quite easy to find. So you want to start from there and then clip down. And you can see this beautiful pattern starting to come out is is so different when the coat is short obviously the longer the hair is the less less you'll be able to see the actual pattern because uh, the hair starts sort of getting muddled with each other and i'm going to try not to be in the way too much but i do have to sort of work around him rather than the camera and what i always like doing i will do like the neck area first so that way I can then just chuck the news back on him and just forget about it. So it's not what was taught to me at college and I'm sure my tutor would tell me off if she saw what I'm doing. But um, this is the way I prefer to groom. And you know, a grooming isn't just black and white, one, one way only kind of deal. So it's a good boy. So you just kind of need to find out what works for you, what, you know, equipment or techniques or products work for you because what I like might not be something that everyone else likes and so on so you know that's what I really like about grooming it's just a fluid fluid industry in a way hey, there we go honey good boy but yeah I'm leaving his legs long so I'm not going to click into them so so I'm sort of when I get to his shoulder on the front leg I just kind of skim into the front leg if that makes sense so it's just so there's less blending for me to do with the scissors once once I get to that stage. So you want to so you want to start lifting your blade off the skin when you get towards um, the leg. And he hates his legs being touched anyway, so he's going to be a bit of a mare for this. Oh yeah. So yeah, don't be shy. If you have got any questions, do give me a shout, and I will catch them as I um, sort of go on with this through. <laughs> Good boy. He's just heard someone in the shop so he's like, oh, for me? Is it for me? Good boy. Good boy. Good 
And then with the back leg, I do sort of like a schnauzer line on the back leg. So let me just move him a little bit closer. Um, so I take the bum quite short. It's just because, you know, I don't want to clean up the poo on a walk and all of that. Um, so I take pretty much up until the knee, I take that really short with a seven and then I leave the front long. He's currently growing back in. Um, he had quite a bad reaction to flea bites over the summer. So he chewed himself red raw just around here and it's taking forever to grow. And again, I skim um, towards this end where I leave the hair long. So it's just less for me to blend later on. Okay, I know honey. And he is not a fan. Good boy. And then lift the tail up. Okay. Right. and what I like doing I will lift the back leg up and then anything that is sort of long um, on this bit of his um, inside leg I take that off with the seven as well good boy No, don't keep the face in it. Good boy. It's going to do the same on the other side. Good boy. Good. Right. And then what you want to do, just look at the dog from behind so you kind of see um, if you've taken the line, you know, the same same length both sides, which I think I have the first. <laughs> Usually it's really super uneven because he's just, just such a faff with his legs, so it, you're surprisingly good today, aren't you? Right, let me just turn him around so you can see. Sit. So you can see that beautiful pattern on him now. You are just gorgeous, aren't you? I swear the way his sort of coat, like, I want to say marbles. I don't know what, like, the official term will be for a brindle, or how the, the sort of the pattern forms. But yeah, I swear this changes every time I glip him. It's, like, it changes colour. He's definitely gotten more sort of colourful as he's gotten older. He's literally just about to turn four next week. Um, he looks so much different than what he did as a puppy. Don't ya? I know you can hear someone. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Right, I'm still waiting for the dogs to come in. <laughs> okay, okay. He's just pretty. He's a vicious little terrier and thinks he's a lot bigger than he is. We've just got a box to walk through. <laughs> That's it. Good boy. You ferocious. Yeah. Ferocious little bean. Yes, you are. Okay. Oh. Calm down. That really hurt my ear. It's right next to my eardrum. Hey, there we go. Okay, so that's his body pretty much clipped. Like that took me absolutely no time at all with a white blade. That's why I really like these. They just make my life so much easier. So the last thing I need to do with a seven is just clip underneath his tail. So I do sort of like a modified carrot tail with Bean. So I take the underside off with a seven and then I just kind of tidy up the, the other edges with, with my scissors. I don't do like a traditional carrot where it's a lot thicker at the base and then it narrows down. I just kind of tidy it up because it's just, it looks nicer, but I don't want to give him like a rat tail. He's got such a thin tail and he's got a kink sort of about there. I don't know if, if he got trod on as a puppy or something before we got him. But there's always been a little sort of like a weird angle there. So I try and hide it. So all I do is just I, I kind of loop myself around him. So he can't sit down, can't move. And then just, just one line and that's it. And then I scissor the rest. It's nice and easy. Isn't it, honey? Okay, 
So I'm in the process of growing the top of his head a little bit longer. I used to take that off with a seven as well. So I might still actually leave that today. It's not, it's not too long. So all I'm going to do is just I'm going to um, use my thinners to sort of blend the back of the head into his body. Okay. Shall we do that? Yeah. Mwah. Okay. No. And I've done his prep already. So I've done his um, groin. And I've done his nails as well because he absolutely hates it. He will fight me. He will like literally reverse up my shoulder when I do his nails. He is, he's a delight. <laughs> oh, dear, honey. Right, I'm going to clean up my table a little bit. And one tip I can give everyone, try not to use your hands to clean your table because you will get hair splinters everywhere. Use a comb, blow the hair off, or, you know, I've got a little brush as well. Hang on, just grab that. So I've literally just got like a little rubber brush. This is really good because there's nothing for the, the hair to stick to. Like these aren't just normal bristles, they're just rubber. Really handy to have. Um, you can use a normal brush, but it's just then you're pulling the hair off that all the time. So it just makes more sense. These are literally just for Amazon came with a little dustpan which is somewhere i don't i don't really use it so but yeah definitely worth it not that expensive either okay so i just need to do sorry i've got my tool chest literally just behind the camera um i'm gonna do beans pads uh, i have got my little trimmers these are like a five in one trimmer so you can adjust so if i where's my camera there is so if you can see as i turn the dial there it moves the the cutter blade there um, I'm going to do his pads with the shortest blade, so that is a 0.8 millimeter length, so you can see just how short that's going to be. So that is just underneath his pads, if you'll let me. <laughs> Good boy. And what I'm going to do with the trimmers as well, because he hates his um, feet being touched so much, I'm just going to try and sort of tidy up around his feet with this as well, so there's less for me to do in a minute when I just start scissoring. Good. And I appreciate I've kind of got his bum towards you. I'm really sorry about that. I usually have my dogs facing that way, but obviously I've got my camera the other end. So I'm going to try and keep him more facing you guys. So you don't have to look at his butt because, you know, that's not exactly the most appealing thing to look at. I, I appreciate that. I'm so used to it. You know, as a groomer, you, you deal with dog butts all day. Good boy. Good. He's a lot worse for his front, so we'll see if he's gonna. Yeah, please don't push. Good boy. Okay. Good boy. Okay. Hang on, honey. That's it. Good boy. No. So I'm gonna keep him. Facing you. There we go. Sit down, honey. Do that then. That's fine. <laughs> Just gonna walk around him and do the other front foot. Spin, spin. That's it, honey. Good boy. Good. And um, I will also be going live next weekend. We will be going to Crufts for three days. Uh, so we'll be there Thursday, Friday and Saturday. And at the end of the day, once we're back at the hotel, after, you know, we've had a bit of dinner and just relax for a little bit because it's just going to be complete chaos at Crufts, isn't it? Um, I'll be going live um, probably about sort of eight o'clock-ish uh, each night just to talk about what we did during the day, what we bought just do like a mini crafts haul kind of thing every evening um unfortunately with the the filming i was going to do like a really nice long vlog for crafts for the entire weekend but channel 4 holds exclusive rights to the filming i tried applying for a press pass so i could film a little bit but it's a total of five minutes of edited footage inside the nec or inside crafts in general so, like, you know, I wasn't going to bother with any of, like, the shelves or anything like that. I just wanted to talk about all the shopping and what's really nice for groomers there and all of that. But anything inside crafts is included in that, that five minutes. 
so it's just not worth it and apparently you can't film anything even for instagram so if you want to do like a boomerang or anything you can't do that so i'm gonna get around that by just doing like a live in the hotel room at the end of the day it will still be fun we'll talk about everything we did and what we recommend seeing if like if someone's going just for the day after they'll know kind of what to look out for so it'll be really fun um really looking forward to doing that i will be exhausted by <laughs> that weekend but that's fine okay right so carrying on before being gets fed up with me um so i'm just just uh, round the corner from the camera i'm not very far okay so i'm gonna tidy up these legs a little bit so what i've got i have got my astrid curves these are from christie's that like they hardly have any curve in them but i just do really like him like them and then i have got my chunkers um they look terrifying i always say this let's see there was a comment there leave him alone free the bean hello dan <laughs> just my other half popping in up, up. good boy so yeah i'm just gonna use these two pairs of scissors just to sort of tidy up his feet a little bit he's gonna be a bit of a wuss for this but he'll be all right better get used to it eventually and the table is really high at the minute it's up to sort of my rib cage but it's just trying to find a nice balance between you guys seeing him and me be, you know, be able to groom him. I will suffer. It's fine. Good boy. That was good. But yeah, as I was saying, I'm still growing his back legs out a little bit because he chewed them just completely bare. So I'm not touching his back legs a lot just to tidy up any wispies that he's got. Good boy. He's been really good today. I was expecting him to be a bit of a stroppy nightmare, as he usually is, but he's showing me up at the minute. Good boy. Well done. Oh, Dean, you're wonderful today. Can it be like this every time? Hey? No, honey. Okay. No, can I have that, please? <laughs> okay so i'm gonna move to the other side in a second it's just because he's dodging me you're dodging me aren't you a lot of groomers will use what's called a table divider so it attaches to the h bar and it literally splits the the table in half so little dogs can't do what he's doing so he's sort of trying to get away from me and then i'm ending up leaning um not usually an issue i can sort of work around that quite a lot but i do have a bad back so I'd I try not to lean too much. Good boy. I have considered getting a um, table divider because Charla, my other groomer, she's got one and she finds it really useful with some really fidgety dogs. So it might be worth having a look when we go to Crofts. Okay. Good boy. And when you're like trimming long legs, you always want to make sure that you're combing and fluffing and just doing everything in between sort of scissor lines because you just want to make sure that you get a nice even finish. I'm not too worried about his legs because obviously he's my dog. He doesn't have to be completely perfect. But if this was a um, like a customer's dog, I'd be a bit more sort of perfectionist. But because he is a fab and he's my dog... I'm not too bothered. And let me just double check if there's any comments. Whoop. Always a good boy. I know. He's a good boy. Aren't you? Whoop. Come on, sweet. That's it. This way. He's just looking into the bath because the boxer went there. And he's just like, well, I want to fight. <laughs> Poor Freddy. I don't know what it is with boxers. A lot of dogs seem to be more reactive with boxers than any other breed. Um, well, I don't know if it's to do with the, the shape of their face and the markings on their face, but yeah, it just puts a lot of dogs off, like completely. Good boy. That's it. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave that 
like you won't be able to see like a massive difference at all and that's fine i'm literally just tidying up the very ends of of his legs and that's it and then i'm gonna leave him it's just i like his long fluffy legs and i'm trying to grow them out as much as i can good boy i'm sorry if we can hear the neighbor we've got really thin ceilings in here it's basically um our ceiling is upstairs is floorboards it's a really old building um i think it was built in the 1800s and it hasn't been upgraded a lot since so noisy very noisy um and typically it's a family with young kids so they are they are noisy not usually an issue but sometimes when we have a slightly more nervous dog in it's a bit you know nerve-wracking having a jumpy dog on the table and then lots of banging coming from upstairs, which we can't really control. But I could go upstairs and have a chat with the tenant, but there's no point. Okay, well, you look like a spam bot. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Uh, And if you're hearing that noise in the background, that sounds like a hoover, that is a blaster dryer. So Charlotte is just drying the box in the other room. And that box that actually, we have um, in the nearly a year we've been grooming him, we've found two different lumps on him. Both have turned out to be cancerous. Um, so we're not just here to make dogs pretty, we do actually check over the dogs every time they're here with us because we do have to have our hands on literally every single inch of a dog so if if we ever say to a customer that if we found something that wasn't there last time your dog came in please go to a vet we actually do really mean it because potentially we could save that dog's life if it turns out to be cancer or anything like that had it quite a few times and you know on average we see dogs a lot more often than a vet does you know unless unless there's an accident or anything other you know that's urgent a vet is going to see your dog once a year we will see a dog every six to eight weeks so we are so much more likely to spot something change in your dog's health can you not lean he's like leaning on my hand <laughs> yeah he's just pushing his hips now hey Hey honey, he's gonna hate me for the rest of the day, aren't ya? Okay. Good boy. I'm gonna quickly tidy up the base of this tail where I stuck the, the clippers. It's a little bit uneven. Yeah, I'm gonna finish off the legs. Stop leaning on me, Baba. That's it. I'm just gonna do this and then I'll do the tail kick and then move on to the head. And Bean doesn't usually take me that long to groom. Like, his bath took me about 20 minutes and then, like, the, the most time consuming thing is his nails. He is an absolute handful for that. So, that tends to take me about 5 10 minutes because I get frustrated with him because he doesn't. He doesn't like a dance lesson, like, it's, it's not his fault. Um, it's just weird, because I used to be really good with him, like, I would trim his nails at home all the time, he'd be good as gold for it. Um, but then, at some point, he just went, nah, don't want it anymore, and that was it. I, he's been horrible for his nails since. Haven't ya? I don't know why. I'm really hoping that he'll grow out of it eventually, but I don't think he will. I will just always have a dog who hates his feet being done. And this is a really good trick for dogs that don't like their feet being done. You lift the opposite leg up so they don't have anywhere to sort of lean and escape. Doesn't always work. Like, being will like lean on my hand and jump. But, um, I do what I can with him. Okay, so I'm quickly gonna, so I've been using my chunkers just to sort of do the, the tidying up with him. Um, it doesn't, well, 
the scissors don't work with every cult type. He has got just like on the border of having too fine hair on his legs. Uh, but I I find chunkers to leave such a nice natural finish that I use them pretty much on every dog. The only dogs that I don't really use them with is like silky coated um, carriers like Yorkies. They tend to have too fine of a cult for the chunkers to look nice. Like they will leave like a ladder looking finish on a really fine coat. So it just doesn't look nice, does it seem? I can yes, yeah, I can just about get away with it with these. If they um they are, really do the same thing as thinners do, but because you have got such a big tooth in comparison, it just takes much more off in one go and then yeah, it's just quicker. Quicker and nicer and looks really pretty. As a <laughs> That's the scientific, scientific explanation to how um, countries work. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> yeah, if you are going to crush, there's lots of different uh, uh, companies there. So if you want any sort of recommendations on scissors, if you don't know what you should get, go and speak to them. Literally any other stands that are going to be there. Uh, Christie's is there. Uh, scissor Boutique. Um, I swear I saw another one. Who was it in there? Um, if you go onto the Crufts website and filter the like the market stand list to grooming, you'll be able to see all of the, the grooming suppliers who are going to be there. But honestly, just go and ch have a chat with them and you'll be fine. Um, I kind of do and don't like these chunkies. I find that sometimes they just fold hair. I don't know if I'm just holding them slightly wrong or what, but like most of the time they're fine. But they're just... Like every now and then I'm just like, these don't cut, what's going on? But I just honestly think this is an error with that. Come on, let's have a quick look. No, don't mean honey. That's it. Yeah, if you are just joining up, Bean is my own dog. He's just about to turn four next week. He is supposedly a Western Jack Russell cross, but you know, when people ask, I say he's a cane cross. Um, I have thought about getting him DNA tested just, just to see what it actually is. It doesn't matter, it doesn't change who Bean is as a dog. Um, but yeah, it's just professional curiosity more than anything. I did see some kind of DNA testing company who is at Croft, so I'm going to have a chat with them, see if they do like the testing kits. Um, there is a couple companies that I can order from as well. There's Embark and Wisdom Panel. Um, I've heard that Embark is the better one out of the two, so I might go and, you know, have a look on their website one day and order a kit, but it's just, they're so expensive, they're like 100 quid just for a test. I understand that it then goes into a lab and they analyse it and they've got databases and all of that to run, but yeah, it's just like, for the sake of, like, confirming what my dog is, it's a lot of money, but I have a feeling I'll do it one day, and then I'll probably turn it into a YouTube video because, you know, content. Let's have a quick look. Stop being. Uh oh, okay. Let's have a quick Good boy. Okay, so there's a little whiskey there. There you go. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to leave his legs because he's so fed up with me right now. Let me just check. Hello, Harry. What what, what are you wanting? <laughs> okay. Let's go quickly. Just tidy up the tail. Right, again, all I'm doing is literally just taking like the, the very ends off. So I'm not going to turn them around and show you. Good I'm just pulling the hair like out away from the tail with my fingers. So you can again do that with scissors. Uh, just to sort of run like against the growth of the hair or you can comb it out through whatever you find the easiest and then you just tidy up any sort of like whiskey ends and then I'm going to lift this tail up and then just do the same on the underside so I'm going to sort of tidy up the the edges of where I've clipped so it all sort of blends in together Boy. That's it, well done honey. <laughs> okay, so I'm just gonna move on to his head. Nice and easy last thing to do. Good boy. Oh. Just a cuddle break. Can you stop going? 
<laughs> he likes looking up my nose. Like every morning, he'll wake me up like clockwork. And he'll just climb over me while I'm still in bed. And he'll come and invade my face, basically. Uh, what your everyday shampoo recommendation? Um, I mean, it really depends on your budget. Um, Christie's sell their own brand called Groom Professional. Uh, they dilute 10 to 1, so using quite a bit of product in one go. Uh, but yeah, their shampoos are really nice. I like using their aloe one. Or then, if you're looking for something a bit more high-end, uh, there's lots of independent brands out at the moment. There's Peanut and Pickle. Um, wow Grooming is really great, but they are going to be more on the pricier side. So, if you want like a cheaper option to begin with, go for the supplier's own brand. So, Christie's Groomers. Um, Muttley's, I think, is quite expensive now. It just really depends what your budget is. But... In general, uh, going for a better dilution rate works out better. So look out for shampoos that dilute 32 to 1 or 30 to 1 because you, you end up using less shampoo per mixing bottle. So that then means that the shampoo, you know, goes further, if that makes sense. So like, for example, a 10 to 1 dilution ratio, you are using like three shampoo pumps worth of shampoo in a mixing bottle. So you get a lot less out of it, um, if that makes sense. <laughs> I think he'd be, be quite happy to just sit here for the rest of eternity and not do anything. But I do need to tidy his face. He's like starting to look a little bit homeless. So I'm just going to reach out and get another pair of scissors. Um, so I have got my thinners. I'm currently using my um, rose line thinners. These are one of the, the first pairs of scissors I got. I have still got, and this is while I'm speaking about scissors, I've got my straights from rose line as well. So these these came in one bundle and then I had like really small narrow straights as well that came in that pack but I started using them as nail scissors because I didn't like using them so yeah I've had them since I started my level three at college and I still use this quite a lot I do have the like the asterisk ranges thinners as well but I've lost the um the finger rest so I hate using them at the minute so I don't know if I'm going to buy new thinners or just try and find a replacement for for the finger rest i'll probably end up spending more money on scissors if i'm honest that crafts <laughs> um but yeah i'm using the rose lines at the minute this is literally just to um tidy underneath his eyes so what i'll do i'm going to move you a little bit closer Sit down here. Good boy. so you can see a little bit better what i'm doing with his face hi baby <laughs> he doesn't quite understand he's looking at my ring lights like what on earth is that um, I don't have the ring light turned on now, but he's just like looking at it like what? So all I do with the thinners, like the reason I look like using these is because it's a blunt end. So if the dog moves suddenly while I'm trimming underneath the eyes, there's less risk of me poking the dog's eye out basically. Oh. But you can use, if you're confident, you can use just straight curves, anything like that. Or you can buy ball nose scissors as well. So they've got like a like a rounded weird looking end to them but you know i don't really like buying scissors just for one. oh never mind the box is back <laughs> let me just i'm just gonna turn him around so you can see the boxer oh, oh honey <laughs> okay um okay calm down uh, uh, uh. Ow, you're scratching. Okay. <laughs> I've just got to do that. He's going. Yeah, that's all right. Minutes. Right. So, while Bean is yelling at the boxer and nearly hanging himself, I'll, um, I'm just going to chill with him for a second. <laughs> He's right. Okay. I'm just going to chuck him away. One second. I know, it's nice, isn't it? Yes. Hello, everyone. <laughs> this is Charlotte, and Hello. that is Freddie on the table. So um, while the terrifying boxes on the table, I've um, put Bean away. He's scratching me to pieces, trying to get to the, the terrifying creature. So uh, <laughs> a little intermission here. Uh, let's see. What can you
Yeah, he, yeah. In all fairness, Bean will probably just want to say hi, yeah. but his response to another dog is to yell at it. And it comes across really aggressive because he's got like that kind of gurgly, um, weird sound to him when he growls. Um, I see this Westie on our morning walks quite a lot, and it's exactly the same noise. Like, same noise. He's so happy to go and see him, but he sounds awful. It really sounds awful. <laughs> Good boy, Freddy. Uh, but yeah, if you've got any questions while um while I'm hanging around a little bit, like do give me a shout. Work wife, Dan's watching. Good boy, Fred. Yeah, Freddy's an old boy. He's really awesome. That box of tongues coming out. Yeah, once um, Freddy's nails are done, they're just going to go and chill in the shop, I think, so B can't see him. Yeah, then the dog will break your back. Yeah. I'm being lazy. Come on, Freddy. All right, there we go. Awesome. Right, there we go. So I'm just going to. Wait for Freddie to go past and then I'll grab Bean back on the table so we can carry on with his face. Yeah, um, that is the delight of doing a live stream. You can't really, you know, predict what will happen. <laughs> if this wasn't like something I was just filming, I actually would have cut that out because it doesn't look good that there's a dog just going absolutely mental on the table as another dog, even if it's not going to be like an aggressive thing. I know it sounded like it. And now he's completely quiet. Bean is, Bean is in a bed and Freddy is literally next to the bed and there's nothing. I don't know if it's like a protective thing because Bean was like right next to me and there was this big terrifying dog walking around. Hey Freddy baby. Hi honey. Yeah, just dogs. Who would have them? Hi. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's see if there's any questions or anyone telling me that I'm a bad groomer because I let the dog bark. Oh. No. <laughs> and the problem is, is like we've got really high ceilings in the shop. So even though Bean is on this side where we've got like a drop ceiling and like foam panels and stuff like that, it echoes when he barks. It echoes so much. Oh, oh we got one. Charlotte just sprayed some perfume on Freddy and it's tickling my nose. <laughs> oh. oh, now look, handsome. Yes. Yeah, I can't wait for next weekend because I will be sniffing so many different sprays and like looking at products and spending too much money. But we'll see. We'll see. Okay, fab. So Freddy has gone. So I'm just going to shift you back to that view and I'll go grab a bean. There we go. We have a bean again. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. There we go. That's it. No, okay, so carrying on with the, what I was saying about the face. So going in with my thinners first. So I literally just clear up this little sort of like a triangle area. So just in front of the eyes. And then I go in between the eyes as well and just clean up the, the really long hair there. He doesn't have loads on there because I gave him a bath. When was it? A couple of weeks ago? <laughs> okay. And I tied it under his eyes then because they were getting a bit out of control. Okay, enough. That's a good boy. So there's not much here for me to tidy up. Good boy. That's it. Good boy. Okay. I'm sorry if it's a bit of a weird angle. I'm considering getting myself a GoPro and have one of those um, um, like head straps to go with it. So when I'm filming stuff for YouTube, I can show like a like a my view kind of camera angle, and then have either my phone or my um, my camera just recording on a stand as well. So you get two different angles, but GoPros are expensive. So waiting waiting for the day when I'm rich, basically. Okay, honey, let's have a look. Okay. 
We're not going to settle now because Freddie's owner's in the shop, so he wants to be involved. I know. Oh no! <laughs> I swear he is the worst dog to groom. I swear. I know, honey. I love you, but you're a little bit annoying, aren't you? Good. Okay. So all I'm going to do with him, I'm just going to tidy up this line here, so you can kind of see that it's sort of a little bit janky. I probably just cut it a little bit uneven when I last did him because he's my own dog. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't put the effort in, which is really bad because, like, he's a walking advert for what I do. So, I should really pay a bit more attention to him. But I'm not taking loads off, so I'm literally just taking my curves and just... Okay, and then just taking uh, uh, the edges off, darling. And just one handy tip, if your, well, any dog on the table is moving like that, stop scissoring. You don't want to be cutting when your dog's not still because that's when accidents happen and you will cut an ear or poke the dog in the eye or anything like that. So just always stop uh, when the dog's moving about. Sit down. Then let's have a look. Okay. That's actually quite nice. So I'm going to leave that line and then I'm just going to soften it up with my trunkers a little bit. It's just so it doesn't look so harsh. I really like leaving all of my dogs looking very natural, like as if the cut I've done is, you know, something that they've always had. Obviously, you know, like anyone will be able to tell that it is a fresh haircut. But, you know, some, some groomers prefer like Asian fusion and they look very sort of like teddy-like. But, okay. But I prefer the more sort of soft, natural approach. You know, both, both styles are absolutely fine. It's about finding your own preference with your style of grooming. Um, you do you, basically. There is no one way of doing it. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to get... He pulls all of his hair in his mouth. So I'm just trying to... There you go. Good boy. Just trying to sort of catch it before he licks his, licks his lips. Okay. Oh, yeah. There's literally just a bit there. Oh. I know this looks a little bit harsh, but I'm not pressing very hard with my fingers. It's just to keep his mouth shut so he doesn't lick when I'm literally just about to scissor. Uh, because that will be really, really bad. Uh, tongues do bleed a lot. It looks horrible, but they like the bleeding does stop quick as well. Okay. Good boy. That actually looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do now on this side, I'm going to sort of... Uh, fold his ear in half so this is like what you do with Westy so you pinch the, the ear in half and then you'll be able to see all the hair that kind of sticks past that line and then all you do you just trim and let go and that's it so that is now I know he's quite a dark doggy so it's a little bit difficult to see that but that's just tidied up that entire line in one go so all I need to do is just a little little adjusting and then that's that side done that's all I'm gonna do with him Obviously, I'm going to do the other side as well, but but I don't like give him tip beers uh, like Westies do tra traditionally. It's just because he's a mark. Um, oh, I'm not too precious about like going for any kind of breed standard groom with him. Good boy. I'm going to quickly soften the the moustache. <laughs> I know, honey. Good. Let's have a look. Be this way. Honey. Be. Hello. No, honey. <laughs> okay. Now more. Ah, 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 ah. 
Okay. Good boy, that's it. Well done. Right, so I'm just going to do the other side. Don't lick your... <laughs> you keep sticking the hair back in that I've literally just calmed out. So I'm just going to try and do this quickly because obviously you can't see what I'm doing on this side. Be <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing there, honey. Let's actually see who is coming in next. Who's going to be that next? Trevor! Oh, little Trevor! We've got a little rescue... Um, they, they call him a border terrier, but he's too big to be one. Um, so he's some kind of mix. He's coming in next. Um, I don't know if Bean's actually met him, so I might not let them say hi to each other. <laughs> Good boy. Good boy. I don't know if you can see the difference. Not really. Yeah, he's so dark. I should really plug in my ring light, actually. I should be able to. Sorry, I'm just shaking the camera here a little bit. So you'll be able to see. And there we go. And then all I'm going to do is just bump the brightness up a little bit on there. So you can kind of see now. So I've taken that sort of like the brow line quite a lot shorter. So it's not as hooded um, as the, the like the untrimmed side. I personally don't like this really hooded look with dogs. I like leaving them with really nice open expressions and that then just means that you know when when the cut starts growing out it's not the first thing to look too long and too overgrown. Good boy, you're so handsome aren't you? I am biased with it being my own dog but um, yeah, he's very handsome. He gets a lot of attention when we go out for walks. Yeah, I'm just pinching the ear again and I'm just going to do that line. And neighbours are at it again. If you can hear that thumping. Don't pull your ear away. That's it, honey. Ah, ah, ah. That's Charlotte, don't you worry. No, honey. Sorry. Look at her then, that's fine. Just watch her walk away from you, not pay attention to you. <laughs> You're like, oh man. But this lady doesn't want to, to cut me in, hold me in. She'll be nice to me, I know. Good boy. Yeah, I'm pretty much done with him. Um, like I said, he's a really nice, easy groom for me to do because obviously he's my own dog. I have always groomed him. Um, and I leave him quite long in places, so there's not much trimming that is, you know, required on him. And um, with me using the wide blades as well now, more often than not, it's just so quick to do grooms. Um, using the wide blades has probably cut off about 15 minutes of my work per dog. Um, so that means that I can, you know, either have an easier day or I can fit in another dog, make a bit more money. You know, with being self-employed, if you don't have a dog on the table you don't get paid so you kind of have to evaluate if you want that easy finish or if you want to make more money um but it's definitely a good thing being able to decide your own hours but if you have the tendency to be a bit lazy or procrastinating or anything like that yeah it's, it's not great sometimes um, like especially on a day like this I had two dogs in I did one charity groom actually so I didn't charge the customer for it um, the owners not doing well at the minute so as a like just a goodwill gesture I said to them that look I will groom your dog for free I haven't seen your dog for quite a while he hadn't been in since May so he was a little bit matted um, had some fleas really itchy skin so he'd been nibbling on his legs and all of that so he had no hair in places so I was like, you know what, I will do him for free for you because the likelihood of the dog have, you know, being done anywhere else was quite slim. And he's, he's a local man and he does quite a lot for the local community. So I, was, I just wanted to help do my part. Uh, I don't want anything out of it. I just wanted to do a nice thing for someone who's struggling. Um, and the dog I had before that was a really nice doodle. So it's been a nice day and my other half's home, so I'm going to... I'm going to go home in a minute. <laughs> what are you doing? 
Why are you looking away from me? He's not gonna. He's not gonna want to know me today. As soon as I get home, he'll um he'll run away from me basically. Well, yeah. Come on. I know that it's just Charlotte. You don't have to look that way. Sorry, I'm just gonna face him away from the camera for a second. It's just so I can see what I need to do with him. So I stand behind you. No. Oh. Good boy. Nan 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 nan. I know. He doesn't like the scissors near his ears because it sounds funny. Doesn't it? Dog, move. Good boy, Bean. Don't slap me. I know. And what you want to do when you're, you know, doing a face, just faff around with the hair. Like, lift it up. Just make sure that it's all even on both sides. Walk away from the dog a little bit. Just because if you're like, you know, this close to a dog, you won't see the finer details like what's uneven. So just don't be afraid of stepping away and having a good look at what, you know, what shape the dog's like looking. Ah, 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 ah. Good boy. Just because Charlotte. Good boy. Nice. Good. Very nice. Oh, he's such a handsome boy. I know, isn't he? <laughs> I was literally just saying that I am biased, but he is handsome. Enough. Enough. It's just Trevor coming in. Hi, do you want some sweets? Do you want some sweets? He will spin for treats. It's just to distract him while um, Trevor's coming in. Oh my goodness. And I'm using fourth blade. I feed him fourth blade at the, um, the um, not raw food, but it's sort of like wet food. And then I sell these at, at the salon as well. And Bean gets these at home as well. And he loves them. These are salmon. They're grain free, really good quality um, snacks to have for a dog. Nom, 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 nom. Yeah. No, you're not having the entire bag. Greedy little creature. I'm gonna pop this in my pocket and just have a quick look at you. Because all I need is just yeah. So there's a little bit just longer there. I'm gonna try and snip that off quick before Trevor comes in and Bean's gonna scream at him. Okay. Okay. Good. So all I need to do now is just trim my little anchor point. So I'll always hold on to the dog's chin when I'm grooming them. Um, some people prefer to hold on to the dog like that, so they're like resting their, their chin on you. But that is something that you need to train every single dog to do. And it's not very common that it will get taught at colleges. So like holding the chin hair is like the most common thing. And there was a little while where I made the mistake of trimming it first and then I'd have nothing to hold on to and then the dog will be a bit of a pain. Got it. Nice. Okay. He might bark again. I'm really sorry. Oh, good boy. Good. No, Trevor wasn't scary. We're all good. It wasn't a terrifying big box of walking through. Oh, good boy, B. I know. You just want to look at him. Good boy. Yes. Okay, he's gone now. Okay, I think we are pretty much done. So I know that wasn't a very technical groom to show you guys, but it's like a quick everyday terrier groom I do. I do this kind of style on quite a lot of dogs actually. Think, can you actually face the camera so people can see what I've done? So it's just a, like a, not really like a breed standard Westie. It's a bit modified. So like I said, I don't tip his ears. Um, with the Westie breed standard groom you'd sort of take I think it's about a third you clip off really short and then you've got the the fluffy edges everywhere else on the on the ear uh, but otherwise it's like a rounded really pretty face on him I used to groom him like a schnauzer on the face as well it's just now that I look back in pictures it just really didn't suit him I'm really glad I've sort of learned this kind of style with him instead um but thank you so much for tuning in. I will be making this into a video as well. So if you join sort of halfway through the stream and you want to watch the start of it, um, once YouTube has processed the, the live stream, because it does take a little while to process, nearly an hour's worth of footage, um, it will be available later on. 
but thank you so much for tuning in and i will be back with some lives next weekend for some craft stuff so i'm really looking forward to that so me and bean are now going to go and just cuddle at home have a chill afternoon under a blanket watching some garbage tv and eating a lot of food so i will see you guys next week let's see bye